Thanks, Eric. So this this talk, I I choose the name for it pretty late. So in the agenda, it says the Rebar 3 format, very uh, boring name. But I talking with Francesco, uh, I, I got a better title for it. It's consistently ugly, and you will see why in a couple of minutes. But this talk can actually be just one slide, this one. This is all you need. Since this is a virtual conference and you are on your computers, you can put my talk in the background, go to your project, your favorite project managed with Rebar 3, add this plugin, run that command, and check how everything is, looks much better, or at least, as I said in the title, consistently ugly. That's it. Now, while you do that, you have 30 minutes to do that while you try with your different projects and find bugs to report to the River 3 issues list. I will talk about the history of this and I will talk about the alternatives and the features of this new plugin. First of all, uh, Eric already introduced myself with a lot of uh, details. I will just add that if you go to Conference Cast TV, you can find all the talks that I gave in the different conferences. Uh, my favorite one is the first one because it's a funny one. I learned all of this, but you can find my talks about anything else. And uh, they are trying to organize uh, Ask Me Anything sessions there, so I can be there as well, as well as I will be in a couple of minutes in the Ask Me Anything session here in this conference with Miriam. With, sorry, with Laura. So if you, if you, uh, have questions after the talk, I will, I will be happy to answer them there. Anyway, let's go first with a, with a bit of history. And I think the best way to describe the history of the Erlang ecosystem in general is what Francesco used when he gave a talk at the Elixir Conf uh, Latin America last year. In Spanish, sounds much better than in English. It's basically two steps forward, one step behind, but in Spanish, it looks like dancing. So, dos pasitos para adelante, un pasito para atrás. And it's basically the story of uh, the tooling in this ecosystem. How every time we think we are ahead of the curve in different things, or in technology, in uh, reliability, in prepare, being prepared for things that are yet new to any other community, we are one step behind in tools for the regular developer that just wants to start with uh, start writing code in, in our languages. And it has, it lacks the basic tooling to be sure that it's doing the right thing. A few years ago, I was working at and at Inaka with uh, we developed uh, in a multitude of languages. One of them was Erlang, I would say the main one, but we also worked in Ruby, in Swift, in Python, etc. And for all those languages, we had uh, different uh, tools for uh, checking that our code was um, fulfilling the best practices uh, provided by the community, and it was uh, behaving. It, we, we were, there were tools to, to tell us that we were writing good code. We had RuboCop for Ruby, Swift Lint for, Lint, uh, for Swift, etc. And all those tools were uh, available as GitHub, uh, automatic GitHub code reviews uh, through uh, uh, an application called Hound. But when it comes to Erlang, we had nothing. There was a linter, but it was the linter that worked in the, with the compiler, so it didn't check much. And there was another tool created by Costis that, that also checked for good practices, but it was only for open source projects and you had to upload the whole thing to a website that was generally down. Not, not a great thing. So we decided to fix that, that issue and we created uh, Elvis. Elvis is, a, is a, an Erlang linter. So far, as far as I know, it's the only one that, that it's outside of OTP and the compiler. It's, uh, it's actively maintained by the Inaka community. For those who don't know, Inaka was a, co a company back then, but then we, we were closed. And so we stayed together as an independent community of open source enthusiasts. And, um, and we keep maintaining our open source repositories in GitHub, in particularly the ones related to Elvis. Uh, 
Elvis is also configurable, so you can you can add or, or remove or uh, tune the rules that you want to check. Uh, you wanted to check in your code. It's integrated with Rebar three thanks to Heinz uh, Gies, Gies or sorry, I don't know how, how that your name is pronounced, Heinz. And um, and it's also extensible. So if you if you want to check more things than the basic ones, you can add your own rules. And it's used, it's widely used. And now, a year ago, I was working on Nextrel, and again, we worked in a variety of languages, and we found out that every language, especially modern ones, uh, had a tool for formatting the code consistently across different code bases. Elixir has the mixed format, Elm has Elm format, Go has GoFMT, and uh, nobody thinks twice about how to format code. Everybody just knows that they run this tool and the code is properly formatted and done. There is no discussion about where to put the semicolons, where to put the open brackets or the closing brackets or whatever. But when it came to Erlang, we had yeah, a lot of discussions and very, very good ideas, but nothing in practice. And so uh, we decided to create River 3 format, which is has the same principles behind it uh, than Elvis. It's actively maintained, this in this case, by next role, folks at next, uh, next role. It's configurable, so it has multiple rules and you can adjust them. It's uh, integrated with River3. It's actually just a River3 plugin, nothing else. And uh, it's extensible. You can, you can even create your own formatting tool. You will see that in a minute. And uh, to, to reiterate, the, the thing is that it's easy to use. You just need to add the plugin, run the command, and your code is formatted. That's it. If you want an opinionated formatter, you don't need to know anything else about it. That's it. And it works exactly as, as mixed format. You add the plugin, you run it, done. But uh, we wanted it to be a little bit more flexible, and I will tell you why in a, in a minute. So we added a configuration. For one, you can choose what files to format and which files to ignore. I, uh, I didn't put the ignore flag in this, uh, in this slide because it was introduced, uh, I think, yesterday. But you can add uh, an ignore flag too that says which files should be kept as they are, for instance, because they are automatically generated or something. But you, the, the nice part is that you can choose the formatter. Currently, we have two. OTP formatter and default formatter. OTP formatter will format your code in the style of OTP. And, and, uh, but if you, if you want something like that, but not quite, you can uh, choose the different options for configuration. To find the options, you can go to the River 3 format repo and they are all listed in the readme. But then again, you can be more specific and add uh, format options to particular files so that this particular file will, in line, will not inline expressions and it will preserve empty lines or other things that you can configure. Again, to find out which ones, go to the repository in GitHub. But the thing is that these uh, configuration permissions will allow us to have a particular workflow that we want uh, to have in, uh, in Nextrel, but I think it's useful for other projects too. This is the idea. The key part here is that uh, we don't need to agree on a particular format for our code. In this case, I work with Miriam, you know, Miriam Pena, from, also from the uh, Education Working Group at the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation. And we have widely different uh, ways of formatting our code. But I learned about formatters a long time ago when I was working uh, with Smalltalk. And Smalltalk had a beautiful thing that was that the code was formatted when it was presented to you. It was stored in a unknown way in the image, but when you want to edit something, it was rendered for you in the way that you like it. So each user had its own format and didn't know about the, the others. 
And I think we get something, we can get something like this uh, here with this format. The idea here is that we define a canonical format, which is the basic format. And it's uh, the way that the code will be displayed in GitHub, for instance, or the way the, the Git bifs will be computed because they will all be formatted in the canonical way. But once I, but there is also a way to encode my personal favorite format. I am a comma first fan. And yeah, I know Roberto, Roberto Aloy also wants this, but it's a, it's a wish. The rock formatter doesn't exist yet. It's, uh, it's gonna be there at some point. Uh, but yeah, if I want my, the code, if I prefer to read the code with commas first, I can use that formatter. And Miriam, on the other hand, she wants the regular default formatter, but she doesn't like one-liners. She wants uh, the closed bodies to be in the next line, even if they are just a number. And so we can encode that using uh, rebar three profiles. And we can use that this way. When I'm gonna work in the project, I check out my branch and then I format the code as my own style, in my own style, river three as Brujo format. I work and then before committing, I run river three format. I do, I commit the, the changes and I push it. So the code, it's formatted in the canonical way for Git. But for me, while I am working on it, it's formatted on my own personal style. And that river three format there, it's usually a, a git hook on commit. So when you do git commit, it automatically formats the code. I don't need to remember to do that. It's just done. That way, uh, we don't have to agree or disagree on how to format the code. Just encode your formatting style on your river config file and done. And if you wanted the same format style for all projects, just put that thing in the general river config on your computer, on your home directory, Done. Every, you can format every project as long as it is uh, using the River 3 uh, format as a plugin. So, the, a little bit of what we aim to do and how, we, how far, how advanced we are with this project. Originally, we had two kinds of goals because this project was developed uh, originally in what we call a hack week, which is a week that we have in. Um, in uh, next role twice a year to work on whatever we want, not particularly on the projects that are our regular day-to-day -day work. So Juan Bono, Diego Calera, and myself decided to work on this one. And so for the first version that was just a week of work, we wanted something integrated with River 3, something that didn't uh, break your code, but, uh, uh, but some that if it, you have to, uh, this it tells you, you have to manually edit it a little bit. That's particularly related to macros because they are complex stuff. And, um, but we also, wanted, we also didn't want to spend a long time deciding which one was the default style that we want to use. So we took OTP style. Uh, we decided to format the code as OTP because the OTP code already has tools for formatting code. Later we found out that they were not ex exactly used, but that's another story. And, and we, as I said, we wanted not to reinvent any wheels. So we used uh, the pretty printer that comes with Erlang, the parser that comes with Erlang, uh, everything else that is on already on OTP. Those are the tools used by Earl Tidy, if you know it. And they are, I would say, incomplete. I, I'm not sure I will choose the, the best word for it, but uh, the, the output that we got was not even consistently ugly. It was really ugly. But version 0.1.0 0 .1, 0 .1 was released, so we were happy about it, but yeah, we had long-term goals. We didn't reach version 1.00 yet, but we are very close to it. We are in 0.30 and just a couple of bucks away from the first major release. And, uh, and for this code, what we want is something that facilitates the proposed workflow, the workflow that I described before, and that's done. And we wanted, we at some point decided to step away from OTP default because 
it was impossible to add options to make it better. It just it was just ugly. So we we just came up with our own default style. But we also allow people to use the OTP style if they want. We kept that there. We kept that there, but we don't use the default tools. We had to copy the pretty printer and make our own uh, uh, formatter based on it. I will talk a little bit more about it later. And uh, we wanted it to handle as many strange scenarios as possible, particularly related to macros, screen representation, uh, types, uh, different attributes, etc. And this, I think the only one that it's still messing up with us is macros. Everything else is pretty much handled. And uh, we wanted it to be easy to apply, and I think we achieved that. I, I showed you before. So we also want, we also had a much, much, much larger goal. And I will tell you that in general, the people that create formatters, particularly for new languages where there is not a lot of code already in the wild, they want all code in all projects to be formatted in the same way. And we knew the day, the day zero that that was a too ambitious goal for us. So we wanted a more achievable goal, this one. We wanted to format all Erlang code with the same tool. As long as you use the RIVAR3 format in your project, that's fine. If you don't like the style that it's written in, you can tweak it and run the format again and, and see it uh, your way. And I think that's an achievable goal. So that's why I said, start using it. Even if the code doesn't look exactly what you want, you just gave everybody the chance to read the code in the same way, which is a nice thing to do. Again, so far, a River 3 format is a River 3 plugin. Doesn't break your code. It, it tells you if it's going to break it, so you can patch it. And uh, it provides a, a, a style that it's consistent. Might be ugly yet, but every you can read every single model and they will all look the same. It's extensible, so you can define your own formatters if you want. It allows you to work on the workflow that I described before. It handles many strange scenarios, and we found a lot of them. You can find them in the tests, in the test suites that we created for, for the real formatter, and you will probably learn that you can do some very, very strange things in Erlang, and it's easy to use. The problem is that uh, we had to depart from using OTP tools, and that means we had every new uh, release of OTP, we had to update our tools because they are not the base ones. We have to put them up to, up to date, particularly now that uh, there are more options for guards and new code and whatnot. We have to adjust. Um, for pattern matching too and whatnot. So we have to adjust things for that for OTP 23. We don't support it yet. And, uh, and macros are wild in Erlang. You can do whatever with those, with those things because they are just text replacement and they can appear in very, very unpredictable places. So my tip is as usual, don't use macros. And you will be very, very happy. And, uh, and the, the problem that I, I do have in my code is that the, the formatter still has this thing where it uh, might rewrite your strings, even if you use fancy characters or stuff like that. The string value will be the same, but it might be rewritten, and that's ugly. We have a ticket for that, and we're working on it. And uh, it only parses. Uh, .erl and .hrl files. It doesn't work with river config files or other things that we plan to add. As I said, it has to be adjusted for every new OTP release, and that's bad, and that's unsolvable, because we departed from, from the parser, and we have a new parser, which is Katana Dodger, which is not the EPP Dodger, and none of them are good, but they are also different, so not a, not a great thing. We also inherited the code from the 3D printer, and that's not the best code you will see there. So if you want to contribute with the project, you have a learning curve until you understand what's going on there. We are improving it step by step, but it's hard. But then again, 
it's open source, so you can go check it out and help us build a better formatter. Or you can help others build a, a better formatter. Because as Daniel Tipping said uh, not so long ago, be, for a long time we didn't have a formatter, and now we have three formatters or more, depending on how you see it. That's how the community works. You see, two steps, two steps ahead, one step behind. And, uh, and I prepared this fancy comparison graph. So the options now are the Rival 3 FMT plugin that's available for a long time, but it, it requires you to have Emacs installed. So if you're not an Emacs fan like myself, I prefer Sublime Text. Uh, you will probably need to install it and configure it and whatnot, so it's tricky. You have Steam Roller by Daniel Tipping, which is almost the same as Rival format, but it's very opinionated. There are no configuration options there. You have RFMT by Michal Muscala and the WhatsApp team that it's not yet open source, but it based on a new, it, it does things in a different way. It's an alternative, alternative uh, style of formatting the code uh, that he presented in San Francisco, so we'll watch his talk. And of course, there is Rival 3 format, and you can see that it's perfect. You see all the green uh, check marks there. So what can I say? Right? It's a, it's a tool that you need to use. That's it. And if you get nothing else from this talk, uh, I want you to, to remember the best tip that I ever uh, had in my programming years, which is this one from Joe. Make your code work, then make it beautiful, then if you really, really have to make it fast. In general, 90% of the time, if you make it beautiful, it will already be fast. So really, just make it beautiful. Thank you. And that's it. Questions I can take here or in the Ask Me Anything session in the coffee break. So, uh, Brujo, this is really awesome. So, big hand, virtual, or, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, know, I don't know if everyone, anyone, uh, everyone else can unmute themselves, but I see some virtual uh, claps here. So, this is really awesome stuff. So, thank you for, for uh, you know, putting in the extra effort, uh, you and the team, for, for contributing to the community. This is, this is what being, brings uh, the thriving community, right? That, that we have members of the community uh, doing these kind of tools and, and putting them open source. So just amazing stuff. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we have one question uh, in the Hoover app, uh, and I forgot to, to mention that the questions you can ask them in the Hoover app, or we, we take them now. And we have a bit of time. We have five minutes, and then, as we said, we have the Ask Me Anything session starting 20 minutes past the hour. So the first question from uh, Martin Vigna is, um, how much have Elvis and Rebar 3 format been influenced by Credo and by Elixir's formatter? Um, not in terms of code. Like in terms of code, basically nothing. But uh, the fact that Credo existed was the motivation for creating Elvis. So how come they created a language 20 years later than Erlang, and they already have a linter and we don't. That, like, that, that cannot be. So we, we uh, immediately started working on that. And the same with this thing. So in a matter of a year, a year and a half, so the, the Elixir community went from, hey, we need a formatter, to, hey, here is the default formatter, done. Everybody uses it. And, uh, and the Erlang community was like, hey, look, there is something called a formatter. We should create one. And that, that was like six months later, hey, a formatter, we should create one, and so on and so forth. And I, I was tired of saying stuff like, hey, spawn fest ideas, you can create a formatter. And nothing happened. So eventually I was, uh, we talked in Natural and we were like, yeah, we need to start with this ourselves. It's no, no longer viable to expect somebody else from uh, doing it. And it seems that we came to the, that conclusion at the same time as Michal and Daniel, for whatever reason. And so here we are. So yeah, I think it's more, it's not like we actually check how they are implemented or how they work or whatnot. We just, they, they just pushed us forward. And that's a great thing.
Yes, so I was trying un to unmute myself and finally I <laughs> succeeded. So I, I think this is a great uh, thing now that we have the, the, the whole Beam community together. So we inspire each other and we get a little competition and that you know, pushes the whole community forward. So I, I think this, this is really a good thing that we're seeing now, um, both in terms of being inspired by, by the work done in, for Elixir, for instance, and also with the different formatters now, now for airlines. So I think this is really cool. More questions um, on, on Whova or, or uh, I think we could open up so people can ask, throw out questions um, here in the forum now. Please, or reflections, or, or comments, or feature requests, even for for upcoming releases. Uh, what 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 would you oh, like? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to say that. Thank you. So, if you use this tool and you find bugs, report them to the GitHub repository. If you find this tool and you find a style that you don't like, but you have an idea of how to implement it, throw a request in the issues of this repository. And if you have uh, uh, ideas or like, there are two things. We can add more configura configuration options to the default formatter or we can create new formatters. So any of those, if you have ideas for, for any of those, just drop them in the, the River3 format uh, repository on GitHub. Thank you, Bruno. So we have a couple of, of, of questions. We have one comment here on, on Whova. So note that ERL FMT is actually open sourced already. So that, that's a comment. And then a question, how would it work with huge code bases? Oh, we do have huge code bases in, in Nextroll. It's not, it's uh, as fast as the other tools like Elvis or Dialyzer or whatever. The only thing we, we generally do, and we wrote an article about that, particularly for Dialyzer, but we do the same thing for this, is that we tend to ap apply this thing progressively, like not all at once. So we started with uh, started formatting the modules that we are changing in the different pull requests. Not every not every single module in the whole project, just those that are changed. So periodically we have more and more formatted modules over time, and eventually we will have all of them formatted by this tool and done. Okay, great. So you were breaking up there a bit, so you can repeat the final um Yeah, it, it runs reasonably fast. We we just apply them progressively because we don't want the pull request with everything is changed, but but besides that, yeah, no, no big deal. <laughs> 